OK, how are we going to report these results? Uh, well, the first thing to note is that in the method, what we, what we would have written in the method section, I'm looking over here because I've got some notes on this, I want to read off some things. So in the method section of whatever report we're doing, we would have written about the type of analysis that we're going to do. And what we might have written there is multiple linear regression with body fat as the response variable and weight and abdomen as two continuous explanatory variables was used. That tells them the type of model that we've done. And we might say also the data met the assumptions of linear regression. So we can say that right now that um, that was an appropriate method to use. So that goes in the method section. In the results section, then we might say something like abdomen measurement was strongly and positively related with the body fat measurement and weight was negatively related with the body fat. And then we could refer in brackets to table one. Um, and table one, or whatever number of table it is, um, we would make and it would contain effect sizes and confidence intervals. So we choose to report um, in that way. The, and the effect size would be the, the slope of the relationship between weight and uh, body fat and also abdomen and body fat. So those effect sizes is what people, is another, another phrase for those um, coefficients or parameters in this particular case. So if we choose to focus on reporting confidence intervals, that's what we do. If we chose um, statistical significance and p-values, then we might make a table of coefficients, standard errors, t-value and p-value. We refer to that table. I prefer in, in the results text to not have lots of numbers um, and just refer to a table that contains the numbers. Um, it does mean that we have to make a table um, and tables can take up a lot of room so in an article where we're trying to cut down on space we might put um, the coefficients actually in brackets in the sentence in the results section um, but I, um, it's, it's um, choices. And the next thing I might write is Weight and abdomen together explained about 72% of the variation in body fat. Um, so it's important to state how much variation the model explains. Now you might, might notice that I slipped up um, and I used the word effect um, when I first read out um, one of those sentences. I said abdomen measurement was strongly and positively related with body fat measurement and weight negatively affected body fat. It's totally inappropriate to do that because this is a correlation and so we cannot infer effect. Uh, so we must not use that word. Or causes um, is another word we, must, well, we mustn't use when we're describing these results. Okay, then we got the, the conclusions. Um, um, and this is what I might write in the conclusions. Abdomen and weight measurements which can easily and quickly be made, are promising indicators of body fat. Nevertheless, some development of the predictive model is required so as to not predict negative values of body fat, and it also should be tested against brand new data that we collect. So that's what I might put in the methods, results and conclusion section. Uh, I could have two graphs that show um, the model output with the graphs we made in the previous section, uh, the predictions of the model, and also maybe a table that shows the coefficients and their confidence intervals, or the coefficients, the slope and the, and the, the two slopes, and their standard error, t-value and p-value. And somewhere we should put in degree, degrees of freedom for error in that results section as well, uh, 249. Perfect. Thank you.